we are live so welcome to my live stream on my facebook page my name is seem i wanted to talk about today how much fat you should consume daily on a ketogenic diet all of it the ketogenic diet is advert advertised as mostly a high fat diet you should add a lot of these different oils and butters to your foods because it's it's ketogenic and when you're on ketosis then you're using fat for fuel but at the same time it can create some false ideas about what it actually means and how much fat you should actually consume yeah if you you can share with with someone who is uh, who could benefit from this information or who is struggling with the ketogenic diet because it's not that complicated once you learn a few few of these uh, few of these simple principles but maybe let's start off with uh, some fundamentals in general how much fat should you consume on any diet what is the recommended daily intake of the macronutrient fat well the american heart association prescribes that you should stick to around 20 to 30 percent of your daily fat intake at the same time there are some high carbohydrate vegan diets that say that you should limit your fat intake to only 10% and on the flip side there's the ketogenic paleo community that says that the majority of the calories should come from fat up to like 60 to 80% so there is a lot of conflict going on here is butter a carb? yes what are the fundamental or the basic needs of your physiology? fat is an essential macronutrient let's, let's start from, from there like Fatty acids and amino acids, they're essential for survival. You need a certain amount of fat per day to carry out your hormonal, to carry out some of the other metabolic processes and to also repair your cells. The majority of your brain is comprised of fat and also the other cells of your body, say the mitochondria and the tissues in your body, they're also made of fat. And what's even more crazy about this is that the, you're actually made of the fat that you eat. Your body uses the fat that you eat to build new tissue. With your 48% body fat. For instance, if you do eat very inflammatory fats like sunflower oil, canola oil, margarine, then you're using inflammatory building blocks. What it should tell you is that if you want to have a healthier body, if you want to have a stronger body, then you should also consume quality fats. But I can't believe i think it may have been real butter what's the minimal daily recommendation of fat it's been suggested by the dietary recommendations that your fat intake should contribute to at least 15 percent of your daily caloric intake anything lower than that for you know longer periods of time they're gonna lead to some hormonal imbalances and other nutritional deficiencies so you don't want to be consuming any less than 15% fat on any diet and on a standard 2000 calorie diet that would be around you know 40 to 50 grams per fat per day but what about the ketogenic diet the ketogenic diet completely flips the situation carbohydrates should be kept around 5 to 10 percent protein moderate somewhere around 20 to 30 percent and the rest of the calories should come from fat but you know these uh, these percentages they're quite arbitrary they might give you some people some false ideas if, if I have like 200 grams of fat to eat per day then you know I get these crazy ideas of adding sticks of butter to my butter, coffee spilling oil all over those things all over your foods and consuming copious amounts of fat the problem is that it's not the high amounts of fat that makes a diet ketogenic but it's the low amounts of carbohydrates that makes you ketogenic you can get actually into ketosis by consuming no fat at all you know when you start to fast then you establish the state of nutritional ketosis quite quickly or you know, even like after a few days the reason why it happens is that you suppress insulin and you lower your blood glucose levels which will then allow your brain and muscles to actually start utilizing the ketones for energy so it's not the high amounts of fat that will put you into ketosis but it's this suppressed level of insulin and glucose and what it also means is that you don't need to be eating copious amounts of fat to establish ketosis or to maintain it wait a minute at the same time the fat that you eat it does serve a purpose especially on the ketogenic diet because 
it is your primary fuel source. When you look at the macronutrients, your protein intake should remain quite stable. You know, you have only a certain amount of protein your body can use per every single day. And it, when you're on the ketogenic diet, then your carbohydrate intake already needs to be quite low so that you could indeed get into ketosis. And the last piece of the puzzle is fat that will comprise the rest of your calories. Hang on a second. And the biggest problem or the biggest misconception about all these things is that, that you can eat this unlimited amount of fat and you will still lose weight. That is not true because you can't escape the basic thermodynamics of your physiology. To lose weight you still need to be in a caloric deficit, at least to some degree. The thing is that when you're in ketosis it's that much easier to eat less calories because you will feel more satiated and you will also you will also have a more fat burning uh, hormonal profile let's say let's call it that way god damn it Pete. why are you fat and if you do indeed want to lose weight on a ketogenic diet then you will have to do it at the expense of your fat intake your protein is stable you would stick around somewhere 0 0.7 to 1.0 grams per pound of body weight then your carb intake is also limited you have to be in a very restricted carbohydrate intake about 5 to 10 percent which is around 30 to 50 grams net or so and the last is still the fat you base your fat intake around how big of a deficit you want to create with your diet how much fat you want to lose I'm not fat. to be honest creating a caloric deficit on the ketogenic diet is actually one of the healthiest ways of doing so because your body is already geared towards utilizing its own its own uh, stored adipose tissue as energy when you're on this on a regular carbohydrate diet that doesn't restrict carbohydrates then you're using glucose as your primary fuel source and whenever you're in this caloric deficit then you begin to burn some fat you know to some degree but at the same time finding you're gonna you're gonna your body's gonna start searching for some glucose or oh, where can i find some glucose or oh, where can i find some glucose and the next best thing it can find is protein and it will turn it into into more sugar so gluconeogenesis is driven by demand not by supply which means that your body will only start to break down its own tissue whenever it feels the need to and when you're in a caloric deficit on a non-ketogenic diet then the demand is there <laughs> your, dem your body is screaming for energy all the time and uh, yeah you you're not gonna break down your own tissue first time in my life I'm pissed off but if you flip the switch and get into ketosis, then the story changes again. You're running on different fuel sources and you will have access constantly to your adipose tissue. You're like tapped into the source of supply or the source of energy constantly 24-7. And that will also allow you to create a caloric deficit more easily and uh, it will be healthier for your both your muscles and your overall metabolism you know these crash diets they usually happen only with on, on, on low fat diets where people get so hungry both physically and mentally they are basically starving themselves okay that's it for my live stream today i just wanted to share you the message Check out my YouTube, I have some podcast episodes that are coming out as well. Thanks for watching, click the like, stay ketotic and stay empowered.